thank you very much for uh, this presentation. I want to thank you, Dyslexia Association Singapore. For me, it's not the first time, but uh, I, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, my idea is uh, to share with you my contribution. So this is a practical session. So I hope uh, uh, I, I have not so much time, but uh, I'm going also through some exercises. And I want to show you how, how we work. Um, my talk is uh, executive function and its relation with dyslexia, exercises to improve uh, planning and self-regulation. You know that uh, there is um, a unique uh, consensus or definition about executive functions. So the term is often related to self-regulation, planning, you know that the uh, lobal uh, prefrontal cortex are very important. We, we, have, uh, we need, uh, uh, because when we have a dysfunction is in this area, uh, probably we have difficulties in many actions. And reading and writing, from our point of view, um, are extremely related to exec executive functions. So I want to show you uh, in my research. Anyway, I wanted to talk about uh, which is, uh, but briefly, which is my, our perspective about executive functions that uh, is uh, supported by Professor Piero Crispiani, University Macerata, and the method is the Crispiani method. So uh, we want to talk about prompt activation, the word is insipid, planning the direction of, uh, directionally from left to right. This is a refer, of course, to to English, Spanish, French language, Italian language, and not the Chinese language, of course. Visual training, cognitive regulation, organization in time and space, and state of alertness. This means that uh, when we talk about reading and writing, uh, the problem is not a visual problem, not a symbolization difficulty, but a lack of motor coordination. So this is our point of view. We have neuromotor difficulties, so it's a exact executive disorder that is related to executive functions. Uh, an important relation so between motor and language functions, we have in our brain, you know that uh, motor and cognition are extremely uh, linked because uh, they share similar roots and this is important. We have a parallel functions and uh, what is important that we are talking about functional processes. So, uh, which is is the relation with the linguistic competencies, reading and writing under the lens of motor coordinations. This means that when we are talking about uh, dyslexia, dyslexia from our point of view is a coordination problem. So when a dyslexic is not an expert in reading, this means that uh, uh, he has got a serious problem with some motor coordination. That I want to show you some exercises, but for to do this, uh, I need to leave my shoes. Give me a moment. Okay, now it's more comfortable for me. Uh, when you, we work, uh, in general, we do this. Mm? This is a cross pattern because uh, we have in our brain, uh, this is a natural cross system. But many often, if you observe dyslexic children, they don't have this uh, kind of uh, walking. We have the clumsiness, so they often, okay, they, they don't move so correctly. Then uh, another point is uh, that uh, we work on a cross pattern. This is a cross pattern. In this exercise, that are not so difficult, okay, but for the dyslexic children, when we work, we start working from three years old 
till adults. But the cross system is um, the key of our, of our cognitive motor training. Why? Because many often the child has a difficulty to cross the midline. And if you can observe since three, five years old, um, in general, the child does this. OK, you have this. So it's very important to do this to improve a better exchange between both hemispheres. So we work in first activation because the dyslexic child is very slow in this. And when we improve this and is is able to cross the midline, we have data and results uh, about uh, uh, reading fluency. So we don't work on uh, reading, but we work on a motor coordination, trying to improve this uh, cross uh, system. Uh, our theory is a proxy motor theory for this reason and because we have a list of exercises to improve this. So, space-time organization, executive dysfunction, slowness in activation. We think that dyslexics many often are not ready for learning. So, if we want to activate this child before we need to activate them through a motor coordination, so in intensive way. For example, if you are a teacher, you can apply for five minutes in your classroom, for five minutes, we have some exercises, then I have some videos so you can understand better, so that you can apply each day. Then we work in therapy, of course. We organize the therapist for three days a week, but we work in intensive way. This means that we need to create the automatization of a cross system. So you need to go fast to do this. Then we have lateral dominance, it's another important aspect, but we have no time, and alteration in rhythm and timing. In dyslexic children, we have an alteration in timing. The difficulty is in multitasking, but if you are good at multitasking, this means that you don't have this kind of a problem in alteration in rhythm and in timing, because probably you have a good coordination, a good space time organization. Then, uh, so what are the keywords? Processes, proceduralization, automaticity. For us, it's not important uh, speed. It's important fluidity. This is uh, a word that you find in the Christiani method. The term is uh, referring to fluency. When you have uh, constancies in uh, your behavior and you and executive functions means that uh, are uh, uh, in order and you can put in sequence all of your actions. In this, the cerebellar is an important, uh, you know, part of our brain. Cerebellar theory, Professor Angela Fo said that is very near to uh, the Christiani method for this reason, because we have uh, many, many exercises to improve uh, cerebellar dysfunction. So, in terms of fluidity, we work on uh, initiation of an actions. This is important. Dyslexic understand well uh, what he is going to do, but he is extremely slow. Then uh, constant trend, self-correction, self-inhibition is also in the feedback is important of the exercises because many often dyslexic children has a difficulty in self-inhibition. So, um, I go faster when we read what happens, learn sequences from left to right, cognitive and motor oriented systems, cortex in coordinated transformation, controller for adaptive sensory motor coordination. Uh, very quickly, I want to show you some exercises to improve children how to move okay, eyes in a correct way when we read. This means that you know saccade eye movements are very fast and jumps. 
expert reader has no difficulties in this because he can move from left to right in a quickly way. So probably executive functions are not a problem, not a problem in this direction. He has a, well, a, a good coordination, motor coordination, no problem in reading and in writing. But uh, the problem is when you, uh, we are talking about dyslexia, what happens? We have this, the distance the I move in his card is between 1 and 20 characters with average being 7, 9 characters. You know that there are several difficulties in fovea and parafovea when, uh, when they read, but uh, um, we believe that we can improve these functions if we apply every early some exercises. I need a volunteer, a person that can work with me. One person. Come on. You? Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Okay, now I want to show you an exercise to improve eye movements, okay? Imagine that I'm the therapist and you are the dyslexic child. So we walk on spot. Okay. I move this hand and you try to follow my hand. Okay? Go. Go. Okay, in this case, uh, I, uh, I go faster than the child because the child is obliged to follow, okay, my hand. I'm moving from left to right, up and down. Again. Okay, quickly, touch my hand. Oh, very good, very good, very good. Walk on spot, walk on spot. Don't forget to walk on spot. Very good, very good. Now we can use both hands. So I'm the therapist and you're always the child. Walk, walk. Okay, if we want, we can speak while we are doing this exercise. So we walk and talk, we move our hands, and we say the days of the week. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> yes, anyway, the days of the week, and we can start. Okay, go. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. So, uh, the importance of this exercise is that the child is obliged to follow a direction from left to right, up and down. And there is an important function because the dyslexic is very slow in the movement of his eyes. So, one of the problem is this, that uh, while he is reading uh, even a short text or a short sentences, this direction, uh, this direction could be a serious problem. So, we work on spot, we move our hands, we speak, this is a multitasking. This means that the children need to speak and to move simultaneously to achieve a better synchronization in our uh, brain. I go faster, how many minutes I have, sorry? Okay, six minutes, go. <laughs> so the importance of eye movement in terms of eye tracking dynamics. So it's important to have a eyes in a dynamics way, a better coordination. So this is uh, an initial activation for the feedback when we read, of course. Uh, this is a photo, but I show you before, and then I have a brief video, and this is my publication. We work in intensive way with the children, because if I want to improve these functions, I need to work for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, okay, you can say some songs, you can say some rhymes, okay, it's not extremely difficult, but very, very useful. Uh, 
Okay, then this is our approach to reading, but uh, I have the, the, the video so you can anyway, uh, yes, you can see better, I think. But uh, uh, what do we have? The therapist show a piece of papers in which you write some words. So our approach is a global approach to reading. This means that I have some words, you can start with three three words, four words, whatever, three syllables, sorry, four syllables and go ahead, you work on spa and you show and you add them. It doesn't matter if the child uh, at the beginning mistakes, what is important that he is moving in a tracking eyes and he says the words. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, we use a lot of exercises with balls, but I have some videos. This is across patterns, but I want to show you the video so you can understand. Uh, an example correlation with reading processes. I think that is the same when, when we go down the stairs. If you observe your children since early years, you can observe that there is a clumsiness at the beginning. Because when you go down the stairs, there is a cross pattern. So I think this is a good intervention since two, three years old. Okay, this is our cognitive motor training, our approach, uh, timing problem, I said before, so a delay of the start action from the preparation process, problem in rhythm and tempo, my colleague Mary Mostifen, slowness in activation, Crispiani. Okay, and then we go, this is our latest articles and publication, our video motor training it hard, and then this is video, okay? <laughs> we are waiting. There is the video, it's okay? Okay, they, they, they tell me two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, to wait, okay. The therapist is next to the child or in front of the child concerning physical activity while reading they working on spot. The main clinical importance of the gentle learn is that it is an intensive therapy conducted through the repetition of physical activities based on cross-lateral patterns and rotator patterns. As you can see, these are uh, uh, a series of uh, cross patterns exercises, uh, taken into consideration that we work in intensive way, so avoiding uh, poses. So for 15 minutes, we work with the child. What are our results? Uh, our data are these that improving uh, a, a better, achieve a better cross systems, you can improve reading and in writing. Okay, we stop here and we go to the second for a moment, the other video. Okay, I go ahead. Okay, I have uh, one minute. <laughs> The therapist shows some cards in which are written words. The therapist shows quickly and the child reads while she's working. Suoi. Fata. Violetta. Grandi. Okay, 
this is the global approach of how we work for reading. This time, the therapist chose a text. She uses a piece of paper and she covers the sentences starting from left to right. Okay, um, as to read look at this, this. The aim is to improve fluidity. Okay, in this case, we are working from left to right and how to improve eye tracking. Okay, to cover the piece of sentence. Uh, pay attention, we are not going from right to left, but from left to right. So, it's important. The disorder makes the child slow in activation. Our practices, defined as ecological dynamic, encourage a neuromotor and neurocognitive activity with particular reference to the fluidity and efficiency of interhemispheric exchange and it also gives a general rapid warning of executive dysfunction. Cross-lateral patterns increase both the dominant side that overcoming medial axis. Okay, this is a, a different level, but uh, anyway, we have uh, always uh, a motor-based coordination, or we walk on sport, or we run, or we jump, but anyway, each time we create a movement and cross patterns. Okay, we can stop. I think I finished my, my time. Thank you for your attention and this is my...